are really thinking about writing books in a bunch of different genres, is it mm -hmm. worthwhile to try and look for like a really big publisher who will cover multiple genres, or to market each book? I would market each book. Specific. Just, uh, just you know, whatever. Don't cross anyone off your list. They'll start at the top and work down. Um, and you, it may be that you want to have one the same publisher. One thing breaks out and they want to buy the other stuff too. Maybe not. So don't. Uh, I would just not cross anything off your list. All right, we're gonna we're gonna actually work our way back to Scott. You actually gave these to me, but here you go. Um, <laughs> boom! Hey! Oh! I hope I hit the camera um, light on the lens. That would be awesome. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm sure these floors are clean. There's only like a thousand students that pass through every day. Go ahead. Um, so like, because I, when I read like conflict, there's like life left in every story. Yes. So, like, what can you do to make that conflict not only overarching, but like in every moment, like there's something the reader feels is at stake. Mm. Like, how do you do that? Practice. I mean, this is basically what the whole class has been about. So I can't take 14 hours and tell it to you again. But yes, what you just said is right. And you should practice writing your scenes and saying, what is the tension in the scene? And oftentimes when I'm writing a scene, I'll say, what is the tension here? Um, and you know, um, it can be something simple. I was, um, I was writing a scene for Stormlight 2 the other day, and there wasn't enough tension. Um, and so I had, to, uh, I had to change the scene. Um, and, um, and, and change the setting so that I added setting tension. Um, I put them in a cafe where you stand and watch a sty storm coming and then run at, um, at right before it arrives and run and go hide um, in this bunker that you know, the, the people are loving to do because now it's all the, rat, the fad to, to watch a high storm almost come kill you. And so there's this tension in the scene of when's it going to be here? We're sitting here chatting, but there's something coming. It just adds a little bit of tension to a scene. Um, the other thing is to keep in mind motivations. What do the characters want, and how are they going about getting it? And that should create some tension. I want this out of this. You know, even if it's a conversation, character motivation is I need to get this out of this conversation. Can I do it? That adds tension. Okay. Um, so I've been reading Robin Hobb, and one thing I noticed she does is like she's just brutal to her characters. Yes. She just, like kicks them in yeah. the face over and over again. Like, is that a good way? Or that is a way, and her books I enjoy quite a bit. So she's doing some stuff right. But yes, she is really mean to her characters. Yeah, it, it can be, it, it, can, it gets a little bit, you know, after, like I read the whole Assassin's First Trilogy straight through, and at the end I'm like, ah, oh, I should have taken a break between these. Oh, mm. so. Uh, but um, when I took this class 10 years ago, one of the things Dave said was, Put your characters through as much pain as you can, and don't let don't let up. Um, that's one of his right, guiding rules. Do you subscribe to that or? I don't subscribe to that. Um, I, I write different sort of stuff. Um, I like to have highs and lows and ups and downs. Um, Dave said, "Never let your characters cry to release that emotion." Um, I feel like I want to have the release valve, particularly in a thousand-page book. Um, it's much better advice in a 100,000-word um, book. You know, a lot of thrillers, you'll n notice, don't let up. They just keep it going. They're meant to be read in one sitting, and they, they you know, rip you through that book, and they use every dirty trick that they can to keep you going. And I call them dirty tricks because they are kind of dirty tricks. They're, they're time um, effective, but the reason they're quote-unquote dirty tricks is if you keep doing them too much for too long, it will spoil the experience. But if you do them in a short burst for a short novel, you just go through the book and are done. Um, this, is, this is if you watch the television show Lost. Um, this is what Lost did. Lost used all the dirty tricks. Um, and then a lot of viewers got fatigue of the dirty tricks after a while. Um, and that's, that's a, that sort of thing. You know, cliffhangers that don't go anywhere um, are one of the big dirty tricks. Um, that's like the huge one, but also character always in pain. Characters can never release their pain. Um, everything always gets worse, that sort of stuff. All right, there's another question. We're going to go, we're going to go, work up this time, so there you are. Um, what's one piece of advice you know now? <laughs> I was, I'm trying to get it on the table so that it wouldn't go on the floor, but it did anyway. <laughs> what's a piece of advice you know now that you wish someone would have told you when you were just starting? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I would um, get an accountant. Get an accountant. Um, don't stress too much about the early books. Just write them. But the thing is, I didn't stress too much about the early books, and I just wrote them. So that's, that's not really good advice for me, because I did it automatically. Um, I don't know. I mean, I had to muddle my way through this. And there, I don't think there's any big piece of advice that would have changed anything dramatically for me. Um, just keep at it. Hey, you've got my swag. Sweet. All right, question. All right, so you write full time. Yes. But I'm wondering what advice would you have for those who had a day job that they enjoy uh, oh. but would also like to write? What well, that's, I would say, good for you, you lucky person, to have a day job that you enjoy and also want to write. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is a good place to be. Um, writing can be all consuming. You're just going to have to find the time for it and put it in that box and try to not let it escape. Um, because you, what you don't want to do is if you have another job that you like, you don't want to shortchange that job with your writing, which it's going to naturally try to do. One will try to shortchange the other. And so you'll just have to get really good at compartmentalizing and saying, this is my writing evening. I do this twice a week. I sit down. I do my writing. Or you know, maybe the job that you like is standing on an assembly line doing stuff, and you can be thinking the whole time, and it won't shortchange you. Um, but if you know the job you like otherwise is teaching, then you can't be sitting and thinking about your books. Yeah. Did you? Were you going to give advice on that? You, you raised your hand. Or? Uh, no, but mm -hmm. I have that problem. I do right. my day job. I'm a full-time faculty member, so all day long is teach. Right. I have a job problem at home, so finding the time to do it. Yeah. And not sit there and think, yeah, I'm grading this paper, but now I'm daydreaming about my book. Yeah. And that's a really hard thing um, if you've got a job that's, that's all-consuming, particularly there are jobs that are easier to mix with writing and jobs that are harder. Programming is very hard to mix with writing. They flex the same muscles, the same creativity. Teaching is very hard to mix with writing. Again, you're doing creative sort of things in the classroom, um, plus it's the type of job that you take home with you. And you have to. Um, what about editing, the editing, you can. You can mix with it. Because usually most editors I know, when they put down the thing they're editing, they can switch to something else. Um, so. So those do tend, but the best jobs to mix with it are jobs where you are going to be doing something like the best job for a writer, not to learn how to write, but to, is, would be something like ditch digging. Because you'd be sitting there digging the ditches, totally physical, and you'd be thinking of your stories, and then you'd be able to go home and write. Um, you would think, oh, that's not a good match for a writer, but it actually is a good match for a writer. Um, you know, doing, being a, you know, being a, um, a, a sports um, star, you know, and practicing your free throws and things like that, you can probably, while you're running, you know, cross country, be thinking about your stories and things. That actually works really well. Um, programming doesn't, uh, unfortunately. So people I know that are programmers or that have, like, Dan, you should talk to Dan about this, Dan Wells. Go to one of his signings and ask him how he did it because he was a creative writer for New Skin. Um, and for other companies for a while, where he would write their newsletters. And it used the exact same muscles. He'd get home, and he was tired of writing because he'd been writing all day. And he would have to squeeze out a half hour more of, um, of storytelling before he went to bed. That's tough. So compartmentalize. I never had to do it. I've basically only ever been good at this thing, and I'm, I'm pretty lucky that it turned out for me because I would have been awful at pretty much anything else. 